Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah, and um, I'm an engineer with the Navy, and I have had the pleasure of mentoring with Luana for her second project this year with MAGIC. Um, it, it, Luana has been an amazing mentee from the start. I was really impressed with her intellectual curiosity, um, her motivation, and her really, her really self-driven um, motivation to explore physics, um, as well as her thoughtfulness and her confidence with a very complex topic in science. Um, and, and doing all this exploration and writing an entire paper during such a short timeline where it's really her winter break from school, not her summer break because she is in Brazil. Um, it's really been a pleasure to get to work with her. And this is really truly a mentoring relationship where I've learned more from her than she has from me. I'm very excited to share for her to share her project with you. And I'm even more excited about what the future holds for her as if, um, in her future studies and hopefully a career in physics. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, so hi, I'm Luana. I'm an 11th grade student at Colégio Maristante da Guarda, which is located in the south of Brazil. And so a little bit on my mentor, Sarah. She lives in Springfield, Virginia. She has two sons. She loves bats. And as she said, she's an engineering duty officer in the Navy. Um, she majored in ocean engineering, minored in German, and went to graduate school to study physics in Germany. So she studied a lot. And uh, for hobbies, she likes running, yoga, uh, and traveling. And I'll already start my presentation by thanking her for all of her support, all of her help, and many insightful conversations. So my project is Warping Space Time, When Theoretical Physics Meets Science Fiction. In short, it's a literature review on warp drives, and uh, which you may have heard of from science fiction and specifically Star Trek. Uh, so my purposes were to evaluate the physical plausibility of warp drives and to understand the importance of warp drive research, regardless of, of such plausibility. And the reason I chose this project is that it was sci-fi related, so I was really interested in that. Um, and also that I had a background in general relativity, aka GR, um, but I had already worked with wormholes before, so I didn't want to go down the same path. And then I knew that I wanted to work with warp drive solutions uh, when I watched the video Warp Drive News Seriously by Sabine Hassenfelder. Um, so in short, general relativity tells us that space time is curved and that that's what we perceive as gravity. And once we, we have that, uh, the basic idea for creating a uh, a warp drive, which uh, Alcubier came up with in 1994, is to expand space-time behind what we call the warp bubble and contract it in front of it, so that space-time itself is responsible for kind of moving uh, the spaceship that's inside the bubble. And uh, you can see two plots there. Uh, we call those volume element plots for the Alcubier drive with different radius. I also plotted a uh, with different wall thickness and different velocities. And you can also see a snapshot of part of my code for that. Um, and so for an outside observer, um, this can make it look like the spaceship is traveling faster than light. And so we say it allows for superluminal travel. And this may surprise you if you have ever heard that nothing can travel faster than light. That's still true, but in general relativity, what they generally don't tell you is that nothing can travel faster than light locally, which means that nothing can travel faster than light uh, relative to the space time that's immediately around it. And in this case, um, the spaceship doesn't have to be traveling even at the speed of light relative to the space time immediately around it. So it's not breaking physics. So the physics aspect of my project was to review GR um, to learn about the OQBR drive, which was totally new to me. and to briefly learn about the quantum inequality and the three plus one formalism. So the quantum inequality is actually a set of inequalities. Uh, it's pretty recent and it's just uh, some energy conditions that we impose on matter, taking into account quantum effects like the uh, Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And the three plus one formalism is just a different mathematical treatment of GR. And as for the tools that I used, uh, I used Python, NumPy, which is numerical Python, and matplotlib.py plot, all in Jupyter notebooks in order to make those volume element plots. I had experience with Python and NumPy, but I had to learn a lot about 
uh, matplotlib.pyplot. And then I also learned about LaTeX, which is kind of a document uh, uh, preparing uh, system. And then I used Overleaf, which is an online uh, LaTeX editor. And you can actually see uh, in the picture the interface that I worked on. So my conclusion is that warp drives are likely not physically plausible. And even if they are physically plausible, they will likely never be technologically useful, even though there, uh, there has been a lot of recent progress. And that's a likely because we can't really be sure. Um, but it is a really good thought experiment in general relativity and quantum gravity in the sense that it forces physicists to face the limits of their current theories. Um, so for instance, one of the questions that can be asked when you study warp drives is, should we be applying the quantum inequality to a general relativity context when we still don't have a theory that unites them, you know, quantum and GR? And what about if we consider a candidate theory to quantum gravity, like string theory or twister theory? How does that impact um, the plausibility of the warp drive? What does that mean for the warp drive? So it's a really good thought experiment in that way. And then some future work includes polishing and trying to publish my article. I want to try to publish it in the Journal of Student Research High School edition. And also diving into the three plus one formalism, uh, which is very closely related to numerical relativity. And you can see a scheme of what the three plus one formalism is all about. Uh, the idea is actually uh, really simple. The math isn't, but the idea is. It's basically to take a 4D manifold, is the technical name for it. Uh, so four dimensions, X, Y, Z, and time, uh, and to slice it up into three dimensional hypersurfaces uh, at fixed moments of time. So some highlights from my experience were to connect physics and sci-fi, uh, which are both topics I'm really passionate about to briefly learn about the quantum inequality and the three plus one formalism, which are really recent topics and really kind of cutting edge uh, physics that I got to have an initial contact with. Um, to learn LaTeX, it really helps. It helps formatting equations and images. It's a lifesaver. Um, and I really, really appreciated having an expert mentor uh, in another subfield of physics. So Sarah focused on environmental physics in grad school and she has a lot of background in engineering so that whenever in my article uh, she felt like a reader with a similar but slightly different background might be confused she could point that out to me and i can make it more accessible um, which was also a challenge of course i didn't want to make it so accessible that it looked like a textbook because i did have a page limit um, and so the main lesson that I learned was to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Uh, it sounds really easy, but it's not. Uh, so I got to my third meeting with her and I was really nervous because I hadn't uh, picked a, you know, a final um, topic yet, a final project yet. And so I was trying to force an idea into reality and it wasn't working. And when she saw that, she asked, well, are you trying to do that because you feel like you truly need to? Or is it because you're uncomfortable? And if so, you need to get comfortable with that. So I think I'll never forget that moment, that meeting. Uh, so I'm really, really grateful to Magic and to her for teaching me that. Um, and then that following week, I actually relaxed a little. And that's when I found the video I mentioned before. And that's when my final project idea hit me. So yeah, it sounds cheesy and it it, it is, but it's still true. Um, and so some challenges that I faced, as I said, were the accessibility of the article and also understanding the volume element plot, um, because I actually reproduced the plot. And then what I did that, as far as I know, no one had done before was change some of the parameters of the function that I was plotting. But in order to do all of that, I needed to understand the original one from OQBR's original article. And that was hard because it wasn't very clearly labeled. So this is what my article looks like. Um, it has an introduction where I go I briefly go over general relativity and warp drives and I present my purposes and outline. Then I talk about the OQBR metric and how it might allow for faster than light travel. 
I present my plots, there are four of them. And then I talk about the stress energy that would be required to actually form this, where stress energy is just a fancy name for matter. And it turns out that it's exotic matter, which has never been observed. Doesn't mean it's forbidden, but it's never been observed before. And then I talk about some other obstacles like the horizon problem and closed timelight curves, which are considered problems with the OCBR drive. Um, then I present a summary of recent progress on warp drive research. I have my conclusions, some acknowledgements, uh, a GR appendix where I go over uh, GR in a bit more detail, but it's still a review. And then finally, I present my references. So thank you to Magic, thank you to Sarah and to my school and to my physics teacher Bruno for uh, all of their support, especially to Sarah for all of her help. And thank you to all of you for listening. Do you have any questions? Any questions for Luana? I think two people have their hands raised. Yeah, I, I actually can't see the whole thing. So whoever has the hand raised, can you please unmute? You can ask the question. Uh, I had a question. Um, I don't read or watch a lot of science fiction at all. So I'm not super familiar with warp drives as a concept. I was curious if you have any recommendations for something fun to read or watch that has warp drives. Yeah, I, I think my biggest recommendation would actually be Star Trek. Uh, when Okubiar first found his solution, he named it uh, Warp Drive because he was inspired by the name that appeared on Star Trek. So uh, sometimes they say like, you have of course tons of episodes, but sometimes you just, um, you just say, you, you hear them saying like, Warp Velocity 7, and then uh, they have a special vocabulary. But the concept of a warp drive in sci fi is just like something that allows you to travel faster than light. Um, yeah, and uh, someone in the chat asked if I could share a link to the paper. I haven't published it yet, uh, but when I do, I can just, I can share it definitely. There is also a question from uh, the name says iPhone. I don't know who they are. Could you please ask? Uh, um, yeah, um, I'm sorry about the name. Uh, well, a no, very interesting. Uh, congratulations. Um, I was wondering if you could explain a bit more about uh, the quantum inequality, you know, like the math part of it. I don't know if it's in your article or something like that, but I was wondering if you could explain it a bit, maybe. Absolutely. Um, I'll try to sum it up, but basically uh, you have something called the uncertainty principle, which says that uh, uh, basically you have something like uh, the change in energy times the change in time has to be greater than a certain number. And this just tells us that um, you can have negative energy, which the definition of exotic matter is something that has negative energy as measured by some observer. Um, and so that's generally considered a problem. But if you take into account that uh, uncertainty principle, you, you get that you can have negative energy, but because of that relationship, delta E times delta T is larger than some, some constant, uh, it can be negative as long as the time for, for which it exists is short enough. Um, so, so that's basically the math part. And then there are just some complica complicated integral expressions, but that doesn't really matter. <laughs> Well, congratulations. Um, hopefully you can publish your article. So congratulations, Luana, again. Thank you. Great job, Luana. I'd like to invite Sarah to introduce a very special person who's called who helped in this project. So Sarah, would you please introduce? Thank you, Vera. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not sure if she'll be able to unmute um, because she's dealing with uh, two very small children, um, four and, and two. Um, my niece and nephew, my sister Emily is on the call and um, she's, uh, she's got her PhD in astronomy and she's a cur currently um, a research associate at the universe or the American, American Museum of Natural History in New York City, as well as um, in, at the College University, City University of New York, um, Macaulay Honors College. Um, she's a professor there. And so I lean on her a lot 
for um, for mentoring students like Luana, whose knowledge in um, physics and and publishing exceed my own, and so she helped a lot with um with some of the tools and Overleaf and things like that. Um, and she's also helped me in previous projects with with um with some of the mentees who are um, interested in space and things like that. So it goes to show that like the mentoring kind of happens in multiple layers uh, within within this project. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Emily, and great job, Luana. Uh, we move to our next mentee, Naomi, but I'll invite.